I'm Ben Chris, and I'm here to talk about the lessons that we learned at Box building um, agentic architectures. Um, if you don't know Box, uh, we're a B2B company. Um, many people know us uh, from our content sharing, but we think of ourselves as an unstructured data platform. Uh, we have uh, we typically deal with large enterprises, so like um, uh, big companies across Fortune 500. We have over 115,000 companies, tens of millions of users, and our customers have given us uh, and trusted us with over an exabyte of their data. And in many of these companies, uh, we are actually the first AI that they started to deploy across their company. Um, partially because many large enterprises are scared of AI, and we were lucky enough to already have been trusted. And so when we do AI, we're always thinking uh, for enterprise grade. Now, when um, we went to do AI on content, we typically would uh, think about it in these different ways, where we had um, kind of standard rag stuff, you know, doing Q&A across a bunch of documents, uh, searching, doing deep research across a bunch of, of corpus of data. Um, and then data extraction is also a, a feature that we have. So we do extracting structured information from unstructured data. In addition to things like AI-powered workflows, like uh, being able to do like loan origination, uh, in, like insurance uh, uh, su summary generation, and, and this kind of things. But today to talk about our journey, um, I'm uh, going to talk about the middle one here for data extraction and talk about how, um, since we've been integrating our AI into our products since 2023, how we've kind of evolved to be more agentic. And I picked this one partially because I think of this list, this is the least agentic looking type of functionality. Um, there's no like chatting, there's no chatbot associated with it. And so this is, um, was an interesting lesson that we learned here. So if you don't know much about metadata extraction, um, the idea behind it is that uh, many companies have an awful lot of unstructured data. Probably 90% of data in the world is not in a database, it's in this like unstructured form. And there's a lot of very useful data in it. And so companies always want to get data out of their, of their unstructured data. So this is what we call metadata extraction or data extraction. Um, and it's um, a common request for many companies. And um, many of, uh, there's actually a whole industry here that you probably never heard of called IDP. And it's really oriented around machine learning based uh, systems where you would like train a model and get a bunch of data scientists to do this kind of extraction. Um, but it really didn't work that well historically. Uh, many companies just, they would only automate things that were extremely high scale and it just wasn't very commonly utilized. And also it would break all the time, very brittle, because if you change the format of anything, it would just kind of uh, just stop working. So um, when Generative AI came out, uh, this was like a gift for anybody who deals with unstructured data, because um, you could actually just use the power of AI to be able to um, pull out structured data. So for us, we started with this architecture. Really straightforward. Uh, take your document, uh, take the fields that you're looking for, do some pre-processing um, and then some OCR, uh, and then be able to give it to the large language model. You say, give me these fields, and it pops it out. You get the extracted data. This is amazing. We, when we did this, we immediately deployed it, did 10 million pages, the first uh, customer, um, everything was working, and we, and, and we got to the point where we were saying, like, this is, um, can do any document now. This is, uh, is amazing. And so um, and it was just really built, built around the basics of, of, of AI on, on content. And so this was uh, great. You know, it was kind of like, yeah, generative AI solved. Uh, we did it, you know, high fives. Um, but then we started to hit the problems. Uh, when we started to tell our customers, just give us any data and we'll be able to extract the things you want, like they, they did. And so they were like, oh, I've never been able to automate this thing before. This is 300 page document that was um, well beyond the context windows of the time. And uh, we're like, okay, no problem. We'll uh, pre-process more when we, we built the concept of like a, uh, an e enterprise rag where we were able to get the data out. And so, okay, solve that. But then they were like, okay, uh, turns out OCR doesn't work that well in certain cases when people like cross things out or when um, you have to deal with different languages. So we had to start to solve that. Then we had this challenge where some people were like, okay, I want not just 20 pieces of data from this document, but like, uh, 200 or 500 different pieces, and, and that just kind of like overwhelmed the attention of the model to be able to pull all those things out for you, especially on complex documents. And then people in this world are used to things like confidence. They're like, well, how do I know what's right? What's your confidence score? And of course, generative AI doesn't have confidence scores like old ML models do, so we had to like start to do things like, oh, we'll run an LM as a judge, and it'll tell you after it's done if it thinks it was accurate or not. And everyone's like, okay, sure, but like it told me it was wrong, so why are you telling me if it, if it says it's wrong? So we ended up with all these challenges. 
and this was like our moment of like the trough of disillusionment of, 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 of AI, generative AI, because the thing that was working so well, that was so awesome, that was so elegant, just didn't work. And um, so uh, for us, we, like a natural engineering response to this is like, okay, well, pre-process more, or we will uh, uh, you know, solve each of those little problems. But then uh, we were thinking about it more, and we, were, uh, we watched uh, Andrew Ng's uh, uh, deep learning class with Harrison. And then we realized that if we applied an agentic approach to this, then maybe you can get a much better outcome. Um, and some people at the time were like, that's kind of crazy. Uh, this is not an agent, agent. This, is a, this is just a, a function. You know, get the data out of this document. It's not that hard. Um, and so then we ended up re-architecting from scratch with an agentic approach. So rather than just do the pre-process, um, pull out the data, post-process, we did a steps multi-agent architecture where we separated out the problems that we had into a series of sub-agents whose job was to solve these kind of problems and solve them intelligently. So like when it came across some of these files and somebody said, I have 500 fields, our, our previous heuristic-based approach is like, oh, just, just chop them up into different field groups. It stopped working when you had like, uh, like if you have client uh, files, uh, client uh, customers of your contract and then customer addresses, those kind of need to go together. Otherwise, weird things happen with the large language model. And so those kind of things, they would learn to group together. Um, and then uh, being able to do things like when it went to go extract the data, rather than us pre-deciding what it should do, it agentically would figure out, I'm going to... I'm going to call uh, this to get these parts of the data. Maybe it's going to look at the picture of the, of the, the, the pages at, uh, in addition to just the OCR. Um, and then we, we incorporated a quality feedback loop, not just to give you confidence, but then also to give feedback so that the AI could try uh, different techniques. You know, it looks like field number three is wrong. So, all right, well, let me try again. Maybe I'll use different models to vote and to do other techniques. And this approach really solved a lot of our problems not just because it um, solved the issues at that moment, but because it became easy for us to update. And this really um, sort of is the, the key of what we learned here, uh, which is that um, when you're thinking of like building these uh, uh, intelligent powered solutions, if you do an agentic based approach, it's a much cleaner abstraction. And um, you start to, like from an engineering perspective, especially if you're dealing with like large scale systems, you start to separate out rather than it be like, okay, we need a large scale conversion, an OCR system to process all these things. You start to think of it like, no, I've got one document and I've got to get through these fields and I'm just going to think of it the way that you would do it as a person or as a team of people. And this really helped the abstraction for us to then go in and be able to improve it. Um, and, and this is maybe the, the biggest benefit was it was very easy to evolve. We got to the point where we were saying, oh, for this kind of lease document and for this other kind of other document, like it's going to take sometimes a specialized agent who had his own specialized routine to do these things. And, um, and, and the, the ability for us to quickly evolve rather than say, oh, I know, we'll build a new distributed large-scale system, but instead say, let's just add a, a new uh, a supervisor to the graph to double check the results when you're done. This let us quickly evolve. And then, and then um, so that when a customer came to us and said, it's not working very well on this new crazy type of document I'm giving it, we could say, ah, give us a little bit of time to build you a, a slightly updated agent to go to do these things. And the, and the last piece here is, um, and I didn't quite like sort of fully realize this at the time, was that by making your engineers think about AI and agentic, and agentic workflows and think about the kind of lessons that you learn when you're building these things, they then um, start to think about customers, like so many of our customers are actually building their own LangGraph powered or other system powered agents. And then so they'll call us as a tool. And so then there'll be, the, our engineering teams will now be like, oh, well, I have some ideas on how it might be easier for us to um, make uh, the tools that call us to do these kind of data extraction steps or anything else easier. And so um, this is one of the key lessons was as many people are on this quest to build an AI first engineering organization, these kind of like actually building this way helps quite a bit. So. The, if I went back in time to talk to myself before, um, or if you asked me for advice on uh, anybody who's got an existing system, and you said, I'm going to build some intelligent features, what advice would I give? My number one piece of advice, and I think I'm the last speaker here, so um, may maybe this is a piece of advice that can uh, hopefully summarize part of this conference, is if you think you have, uh, if you start to go down the path of building something, build Agentic, build it early. And with that, thanks everyone.